Welcome to episode one of Hidden Cemeteries. Let's explore three small hidden abandoned cemeteries in New Jersey. The last one is my favorite because it holds a relative of one of the most influential people in history. Quick note, I normally capture my footage in landscape with my regular camera, but the locations in this particular episode were recorded before I knew I'd be making a full series on YouTube, so nearly everything is shot vertically and on my cell phone, with TikTok being the original intention. It still came out great, I just wanted to explain why this episode looks the way it does. Moving forward, this series will be shot in landscape and as much on my camera as possible. Okay, let's explore some lesser known cemeteries. First up, we have Fields Free Burial Ground from 1804 in Eatontown, New Jersey. I actually came across this one by accident while looking for the next one on this list. Look at this cute pathway on the way to the cemetery and the two deer hanging out here. I know they're a little difficult to see. Now there's not much information on this one, but like with many of these small family cemeteries, this one was most likely a family farm or property long before a neighborhood was built around it. From the little I found afterward, there seems to be more than just the Fields family, unless they're extended family. Imagine living in this house, like right, it's a cemetery in your backyard. Here's some information on some of the people buried here. One that I know of is unfortunately a murder victim. There's a whole family of Fields, including Edmund Fields, William Fields. There's Frank Fields, who was 36, Benjamin Fields, who was 28, also Henry Fields, who was only 25, and Gertrude Fields, who was only seven days old. There were some Union soldiers in the Civil War, like Private Charles Fields, Private Thomas Walcott, and Private Arthur Davis, and there's more of the Davis family here, including Mary Davis, who died at the young age of 18 in 1874. In someone's backyard. Here's the one I found extra fascinating. Jazine Wessels is buried here. She was born in 1894 in Germany. This is exactly 100 years before I was born, and she actually died the same age that I am now. She died January 14, 1922, at the age of 27 or 28 in Monmouth County, New Jersey. This poor woman was shot and killed by her sister, Mrs. Hermione Rensman, who was convinced that her little sister was stealing the love of her husband. Mr. Rensman explained that when Miss Wessels came down from Germany two months ago, he noticed his wife seemed to be extremely jealous of her. Mrs. Wessels' family still mourns her to this day. There's also the Warner family buried here. One of them is named Emily Warner, the daughter of Jacob and Deborah, age six and a half, who died in April of 1859. Something I found odd was there were multiple children of Joel and Catherine Clayton who all died young between the years of 1840 and 1849. March 24th, 1840, Prudence Clayton died, age seven. August 12th, 1840, George Clayton, birth date unknown. June 15th, 1844, Edmund Clayton, age two years, eight months, 16 days. February 3rd, 1849, Lydia Ann Clayton, five years, nine months, two days. Does anyone know more about this? William Kelly here lived in Eatontown his whole life, was an expert on the care of fruit trees and gardens, and worked on the farm of George A. Corley's, whose daughter, Elizabeth, he married. That farm later became the Mammoth Racetrack. This is Locust Grove Cemetery from 1822, and it's mostly abandoned from what I understand. In fact, when I set out to look for it, I didn't even know it had a name. Just that it was in a small patch of forest in the middle of a lot of daily activity. Strip malls, a highway, not far from a major mall. People pass it every day and still don't know about its existence. Someone by the name of Chris Tomaney wrote into Weird New Jersey, saying that at the time, some tombstones had what looked to be sinkholes in front of them and was extra careful not to step on any graves. The street and everything is right here. Bet no one knows they drive past this abandoned cemetery. Oh, this is so cool. 
I think some graves are either missing or have trees completely engulfing them since this submission to the magazine. Upon my research, I learned that a man who murdered his wife and the murder victim herself are both buried here. Jerome Capacet killed his wife and children and then committed suicide. He did this because his wife was showing interest in other men. I believe the children are also buried here. The family didn't live far from where they're now buried. Again, it's literally right next to a quick check. This is an odd place for a cemetery, but it was clearly here first. Something interesting I came to find out was another piece of Central Jersey history. In fact, I went down the rabbit hole. Another resident of this cemetery is a man by the name of Samuel Mingo Jack Johnson, a former slave who was lynched on March 5th 1886 in the Eatontown jail for supposedly assaulting a girl named Angeline Herbert. It later came to light he was wrongfully accused. Very, very dismaying. Red Bank Register states, For a long time, his grave was marked by a stake and two of the leg bones of a horse, the latter being so placed as to resemble crossbones. But stake and bones have now disappeared. Dan Howley of CentralJersey.com also recounts his history, citing the writings of author James M. Stone. The article says, Born in Colts Neck in 1820, Johnson was abandoned by his parents and raised by a white family, the Lairds. The Lairds used Johnson as a slave and because of his size, he was short and stocky, as a jockey. Johnson rode a horse named Chief Mingo to victory during one particular race, and from that day forward he was referred to as Mingo Jack. Around 1840, when slavery was abolished in New Jersey, Johnson left the Lairds and began working odd jobs around Middletown and Eatontown. At the time, Johnson, who was in his late 60s, lived in a small wooden cabin and cared for his then bedridden wife. Most of his children were grown and had moved on. Angeline Herbert, who claimed to be assaulted by Johnson, was misinformed by the person who actually did assault her. There's a plaque in his remembrance in Wampum Park where the jail used to be. Unfortunately, it seems this cemetery has been disregarded and disrespected. Finally, we have Coval Hill Cemetery, or the Old Robins Burial Place in Monmouth County, New Jersey, established in 1695 by the Robins family. All right. Taking a risk with these bugs. I'm surprised not more people know about this one, though it is very hidden. Come with me up this hill on the side of the road, through a narrow path, and into the woods to see an overgrown cemetery, which is the final resting place of President Abraham Lincoln's great grand aunt, Deborah Little Debbie Lincoln. It may not look like it, but there are at least 94 people buried here. You may be wondering how a relative of Lincoln's ended up here in central New Jersey. Between 1710 and 1714, several of Lincoln's ancestors lived in the area. Mordecai Lincoln and his brother moved to Monmouth County from their birthplace in Massachusetts. They ran their own blacksmith shop here, and its ruins still exist to this day.
they aren't too far from this cemetery either. Mordecai Lincoln married Hannah Salter and the couple became the great-great-grandparents of Abraham Lincoln. They had five children, one of them being Deborah, who sadly passed away on May 15, 1720 from an illness at only three years of age. The Lincolns didn't have their own burial ground and had to bury her here at the old Robin's burial place. It wasn't too long after her death that the Lincolns moved to Pennsylvania, their descendants migrating to Virginia, Indiana, and Kentucky, where our future president was born in his well-known log cabin on February 12th, 1809. And of course, in a usual urban legend fashion, there are ghost stories associated with Debbie's gravesite, reports of mournful sobs and the spectral apparition of a horse-drawn funeral procession. The activity is usually reported to take place in May, around the time of her death. Coincidentally, when I visited, it was May 19th, 2021. Let me know in the comments if you found Deborah's story or any of these other stories fascinating. Stay tuned because episode two of Hidden Graves is already in the works. Here's a sneak peek. To be notified about all future episodes, hit the subscribe button and notification bell below. And if you like this series, you may also like my series Lonesome Graves, which I've linked below. Thanks for watching. Are you kidding me? Ooh.